Couldn't have picked a better one myself. It's top of the line. All the options. The only thing it can't do is fly. No, I'm just licking. This one is way out of my price range. Oh, see, now there's your problem. Price range is really just a frame of mind. The facts are that you work hard. You deserve this. And God wants you to be happy. Yeah, appreciate your enthusiasm, but um, God never said that. You know that a uh, new car salesman loses 30% of his value the second he leaves the lot? Yeah, true facts. Google it. All right, we're starting a new series called God Never Said That, and I saw this from a pastor I really admired that had this, these videos. I thought, wow, we can launch off of something good with this because there's a lot of misnomers out there. There's a lot of theology that's floating through our society, and I would venture to say in the church today, we believe this misnomers. And what we're gonna do for the next three weeks after tonight today, not tonight, that's the next service, is we're going to look at these things that are so commonly held as scriptural and they're not. Have you heard that saying, God helps those who? All right. Have you heard this? God will never give you more than you can handle. Well, that's okay. God won't give me more than I can handle. Or how about, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. And it doesn't matter what you do if no one gets hurt. And so we're going to look at some of these misnomers that people believe and people quote like it's in the Bible. You know, it's like in 2 Bucci 3.17, it says God, will not, God helps those who help themselves, right? And, and a lot of these sound good, they sound religious, but are they really, really true? And by far, what we're going to talk about today is the most heard statement I hear all the time. When someone tells me I, I'm leaving my spouse because I'm not happy, I'm leaving my job because I'm not, you guys are good, you guys are sharp, I wish the next service would be like that. But a lot of people say that all the time, I'm not happy, and happiness is extraordinarily important. I've mentioned this before, we had a series on joy, we're not going to go into the, the nuances of joy, but we're going to talk about happiness because I believe happiness is a God in America. And I think that God looks like the Walmart happy face, right? We celebrate and we worship the God of happy. If I'm not happy, it can't be golly. God wants you to prosper. He wants your soul to prosper. God wants the joy to be in my heart. And I'm not joyful. And God wants me happy. Therefore, I am justified in these actions. And you know, the, the sad thing is I've even listened and listened to that lie. And I have to say, whoa. It ain't about my happiness. But the fact that it's such a beautiful day, and I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling right happy right now. How about you? You feel a little happy right now? If you feel like a room without a roof, because I'm happy alone. If you feel like happiness is the truth, because I'm happy alone. If you know what happiness is to you, because I'm happy alone. If you feel I'm terrible. I, I, I have absolutely no rhythm when it comes to that. My wife, Sandra, she's amazing. She's like, how do you do that? I don't know. It must be the Latin culture. Okay. I'm German. I, I'm Italian, too, which kind of saves me. But anyhow, uh, but, you know, we hear about happiness all the time, and, and you know, happiness is a great thing. I mean, as parents, if you're a parent, you want your kids to be happy, right? Come on, let's be truthful here. We like to be happy. And make no mistake, you and I like happiness, and we often equate God's will with happiness. And let me just say this, and I, I, it's very important we understand this. And I, I want to explain to you a little bit. Each church has a different culture. I grew up Presbyterian. Presbyterian, most of the pastors have PhDs. So, uh, and so we, we, you know, we really get excited when, some, when, we, when we parse the Greek verb and all, we get excited about the truth and talk about that. And I, I come from that background a little bit. And then you come more to a charismatic or spirit-filled, uh, what they call a uh, background. It sends a feel, if you feel the Holy Spirit. I went to the service and I didn't feel the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit was not there. You know, I, I've been to services when someone says, Pastor, I got slimed today, almost like the Ghostbusters movie. When I walked in, I said, I felt happy. And so many people give too much credence to their emotions, give too much credence to their intellect. 
But what we really need to listen to is the truth of God. Does God want you happy? Yes, but not at the expense of you not being holy. So what does this all mean today? We're going to look at it. And uh, let's be honest. I hear it all the time. Do you not hear that all the time? I just want to be happy. Listen, I want to be happy too. Okay. So the Bible says this in Psalm 146.5. This is good news. Happy is he who has God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord. So if I'm happy, God's hope was within me. So we can quote these scriptures all the time. We can say a bunch of things. God wants me to prosper. God wants your soul to be blessed. God wants you to be prosperous in all that you do. He wants you to be a smashing success. After all, we are God's people, and we should be happy. If you're not happy, then something must be demonic in your life. It's an attack of Satan upon you. You know what I've found? Sometimes these attacks of Satan are not Satan at all. They're God trying to grow me up. You know, I was just talking to someone recently, and they said, uh, you know, when I first gave my life to Christ, it's like every day I felt his presence, and I just, but now all of a sudden it's different. I said, well, welcome to Christianity. You've got out of the birth canal of Christianity. You've been nursing on God's grace and blessing, but God now wants you to grow up just a little bit. And that's all part of the process. And... Um, if I told you that God doesn't want you happy, that might bother some of you. Now, some of you have no trouble with that because you grew up in a church that way. That if you're, if you're happy, there's a problem. As a matter of fact, when I went to Romania a couple of years ago on a mission trip, uh, they were under communist rule for nearly 50 years. And, and what happened was, if you served Christ, you were going to be persecuted, hands down. And as a result, they experienced a lot of turmoil, and it wasn't so happy. But when the Back in 1989 or 88, when they got their freedom, still today, those in the church frown on happiness. Because if you're holy, you won't be happy. And so there's a misnomer with that as well. And so there's people that grew up, you can't, you know, you have to, you can't wear makeup, and you can't, you can't wear, women can't wear pants, and you have to put your head, hair in a penny, Pentecostal bun. You know what a Pentecostal bun is? I call it bondage. But anyhow, um... Well, you have to do this, you can't do this, and you can't do and, and the more miserable you are, and the more you suck on lemons, the more golly you are. Well, that's, that's the opposite. But make no mistake, happiness is a God in America. It's in our founding documents, with the pursuit of what? Right? Everyone has a right. To the, as a matter of fact, people march on the Supreme Court steps, and wherever they go around the country, we have a right to be happy. Unfortunately, sometimes happiness can get you into all kinds of trouble. Pursuing happiness, my friends, is a false god and will lead you down the road to much misery. And if that is your god, it will lead to your destruction. What do you mean it will lead to my destruction? If happiness is your end goal, you're not going to... And I, I, unfortunately, unfortunately, sometimes we have been negligent and presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ and saying, if you give your life to Jesus, you'll have peace. Your marriage will get better. Your tomato plants will grow without the varmints eating in the backyard. I mean, your kids will get A's and you'll get a job promotion. If you give God your life, you will have joy, unspeakable joy. And then what happens is you do it and it feels good for a while and then all of a sudden something bad happens. You lose your job. This happens. This happens. Wait a minute. I, I thought God was going to make me happy. Since God is not working for me, I'm going to leave Christianity. And many people leave the faith because they bought the lie that Christianity is about happiness. It's not about happiness, but happiness is a part of it. But if that's your end goal, you're in for a rocky roller coaster ride. Whether you like roller coasters or not, you're going to be riding one in the emotional realm if you make happiness your goal. It's not a worthy goal in itself. So you're saying God doesn't want me happy? Is that what it's saying? Well, if I told you God doesn't want you happy, you might be getting irritated right now. Well, I'm going to go to the happy church. As a matter of fact, there's a great church called the happy church. But I'm not going to tell you who that is. And she's great. But it sounds better. God wants you to have Enjoy your life. God has good things in store for you. And, you know, just seek him first. And all these things will be added. And happy will be he. And sometimes if we have discomfort or delay, risk, inconveniences, it, it, must be, it must be attack of Satan. 
You know, I, I, it must be attack of Satan. I, I've tried, and it's not working. I, I can't get a job. I can't get this thing going. I can't, get, I can't seem to overcome this situation with my family and my kids. It must be an attack from the enemy. Uh, and what happens, we won't even realize that we get deceived, and we start worshiping the God of happiness. You see, the wonderful thing about deception, it's not really wonderful, is that when you're deceived, you don't know you're being deceived. If you knew you were being deceived, you would not be Okay, so I'm not deceived, of course. If, if you know you're deceived, you're not deceived. You're only deceived when you don't know you're deceived. So we live in this false God. And to make matters worse, if you don't read the Bible on a consistent basis, you hear verses here, verses there, and you hear it on the media, you hear it there, and people start on the media, start quoting scripture. Oh, yeah, that's true. Listen, we got to understand something here. We don't worship happiness, we worship God. You see, it happens very, very, very easy. Very easy. In 2 Timothy, it says something that I, I find you might want to memorize this. this. This is probably in the top of your list. I'm sure you all have this plastered to your mirror and your dashboard of your car. And I put, I put it up there, 2 Timothy 3.12 says the following. This is a great one, great one. Yes. And everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will suffer happiness, will suffer persecution. Now, try to get people to come to the altar and send their gift in to uh, WTCCornerstone.com when you get on that. I'd be a lot better to sell a book and say, hey, listen, if you, get, if you do this, God will have you happy. But if I say to you, I want to guarantee you that you're going to suffer persecution. Come to Cornerstone where you will suffer persecution for God. I don't think, uh, I don't, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my wife on the spot, but I don't think anyone else will show up. Who wants to suffer persecution? I don't. Come on, let's be honest here. I don't want to suffer persecution, neither do you. But why don't we memorize that? Why don't we, I'm going to ask a stub on to write a song. We will suffer persecution, praise God. We will suffer persecution. Wouldn't that be great, guys? How would you like that to put it in your iPod and, and sing that every day? You go to work. Wouldn't that really encourage you? No, I don't think so. I don't want that either. Happy. God wants me happy. Above all else, he wants my soul to prosper. That's scriptural. And God wants me happy. And so therefore, God will make me happy because he wants me happy and he's a happy God. And if God wants me happy and I'm not, then God has failed. This happened to me in my early 20s. And uh, it's so funny. I always thought myself to be a person that was more intellectually based, but I didn't realize as when happiness was pulled away from me, well, God must not exist. Now, of course, I gave all these intellectual reasons because well, I don't am quite sure which God is it. Could it be the God of Islam? And I don't know this. But the thing that triggered all that, my little agnostic wandering from the truth, was the fact that I was not feeling happy because the happiness I thought I was supposed to have, I was not having. And I thank God I went through that period of darkness that helped me find the true light. If God wants me happy, I fail. You see, your happiness is not God's highest priority. Now, if you want to understand that, I, I must say, there is an advantage to being a parent in understanding God just a little bit more. If you have children, you know your kids want to be happy. My son, Matthew, is a scream. He's getting better now, but we used to walk in the Costco and which are one of my favorite stores, okay? I, I have to admit it. He'd walk around, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, and I try to, and Luke's trying, Math, you don't understand. Well, Mom and Dad will have no money to get all these things. I want this, I want that, I want this, you know, and, and we walk out of there, and he, and he didn't understand at the time, and he'd throw a temper tantrum and start, you know, demonstrating some emotional um, worship, and we had to align him in the proper sequence of things. I'm not gonna say how we aligned him, but he's learned since then. But the funny thing is, have we really learned about that? I'm not happy at the church anymore. I'm going to leave. I've seen it happen all the time. If your relationship with me is not causing me to be happy, then I'm going to pull away. Do you know what I have found in my life? The things that don't make me happy make me grow. Amen. I'll take that as an amen. Amen. The things that don't make me happy often make me grow. Why? Because I go into this, why am I not happy? 
God will allow, I'm not saying he causes it, but he will allow stuff to come to challenge our, and shake our happy cage. So God doesn't want you to pursue happiness, he wants you to pursue him. Ultimately, who, who designed happiness? God did, okay. The fact that you want happiness shows that you're made in the image of God because God wants you happy. But if you worship the gift instead of the giver of the gift, there comes a problem. Let me say that again. If you wor worship the gift above the giver of the gift, it calls, becomes idolatry. And sometimes we can worship the God of comfort, the God of anointing, the God of healing, the God of prosperity, the God of church growth, the God of renovated children's churches that are being built. I can start worshiping the things of God instead of God. And the sad thing is, most of the time, you and I are not even aware of it. That's why we need each other to help each other out. Hey, 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 I think you might be a little off base here. But if you have no relationship with anyone else and no one can speak into your life, you can really go down a road of delusion and waste years of time pursuing things that are just ridiculous. You see, God doesn't want you happy when it causes you to do something that is wrong and unwise. Come on, let's, come on, parents, grandparents, guardians, you know as well as I do, if your children does something that's not going to make them happy and it's going to hurt them, I mean, let's be honest, the kids want to stay up to 12 o'clock midnight. They want to play, they want to be in our iPad and I, whatever. They want to be on the internet, they want to do this, want to do the other. They, they want to eat Cocoa Puffs, which we don't buy, but we do buy the Trader Joe's Frosted Flakes, but even though, they want to eat Frosted Flakes all the time. I don't recommend that. And they want to eat sugar cereals all day long, right? But how healthy would they be if that was the case? And, you know, <laughs> I, I just have to laugh because I'm going to bring him up again because he's such a cutie. I just, it's such a, he's my last one. Maybe I'm just having so much fun with it. But Matthew has a sweet tooth. <laughs> he always wants ice cream, you know? And when he insults me, he calls me a chocolate head. <laughs> it's a blast having kids. I can hardly wait to have grandkids when they're married. Okay, let's go on. All right, here we go. Um, how about this? I'm going to quit my job. Why? I'm not happy. The boss insulted me. You have a family of four, all under the age of four. You want to quit your job because you're not happy. Yes, God wants me happy. Let me just say right, something right now. I'm going to say it very carefully. Uh, please don't be offended. That's stupid. I just dumb. You got to take care of your family. Well, I'm not happy. Yeah, get over yourself, right? My grandparents, and I don't want to lecture if it's like my grand, but my grandparents and, and some of you, they went through a lot of bad stuff to make good things happen. They sacrificed. In fact, my dad even said it. My dad said, you know, I, didn't, I, I realized this early on in parenting you guys that I had nothing growing up. I had nothing. I had holes in my shoes and, you know, walked to school uphill with snow both ways, you know, all that. And I said, sometimes it was a temptation to spoil you guys because I wanted you not to experience what I experienced, but the experiences I had gave me character. And sometimes we so much don't want to have any difficulty when we put ourselves in a greenhouse. But greenhouse tomatoes are not the best tomatoes. The tomatoes that are outside that have to fight the elements, those are the ones that are stronger. And so people say, well... My wife's not meeting my needs, so that's why I click on the internet. Uh, that's why I, you know, I, I like to kind of, you know, I like to kind of play the field a little bit. I'm not going to do anything bad, but I kind of like to flirt a little bit at work. Cause after all, I, I look good, but at home I wear my jeans or I wear my sweatpants from college. But when I go to work, I wear the greatest fashion possible. Put on the makeup and look fantastic. But I come home and I'll weed the garden. I'll have dirt between my nails and say, hey, honey, good to see you. You follow what I'm trying to say? Well, they're not meeting my needs. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I got to be happy. I got to be happy. How about premarital sex? You know, oh, I just got to be happy in a relationship. I like what one of the pastors says. He says, Christians, they call, you know what he calls Christians today? Sexual atheist. Yeah, we're, we're, oh, we believe in God, but in sexual, sexuality, we're atheists. We do whatever we want to do. How about, show, how about showing dishonor to God? How about, I want to be happy, I want to laugh, and so you go to a movie or something. And listen, I'm not going to tell you what to watch, 
But if they're dropping GDs and, you know, and, and dropping F-bombs and, and blowing people up and all that, you might ask yourself a question, is it worth that to be happy? What entertains you trains you. Be careful about that. Showing dishonor to God. Our worship at the altar of happiness. You know what it says in 1 John 2? Put that up there, please, gentlemen. I appreciate it. 1 John 2, 15 says this. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. I thought we we're supposed to love the world. Well, understand this. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, come not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. It's the old adage of delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. One of the greatest things you can teach your children and grandchildren and teach yourself is to delay the gratification. Pay now, play later. Not play and then pay. Our culture, whole economic system is based upon play and then pay. You follow me? Okay, I just want to get me off on that too. But that's all part of it. You see, God wants you blessed. Yes, he wants you blessed. But more being blessed, God wants you holy. God wants you to be holy. And when you hear holy, you hear boring. Come on, let's be honest here. Oh, we have to be holy. Great. There goes my fashion. Of course, I have no fashion. But no, you say, there goes, there goes all my fun. God wants me holy. I got, I got to sit there and watch the Hallmark Channel. And even that's getting risque. I, I, I got to be holy. I got to be holy. I can only listen to Christian. You know, you get, you get crazy about all these things. But God doesn't want you... God wants you holy, for sure. You know why? I'll tell you the reason why, because he's holy. Thank you so much. There's so many bright people here this morning. First, First Peter 1.15 says this, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Well, first of all, what does it mean to be holy? Holy does not mean you don't do anything. Holy means, ultimately, you are whole, W-H-O-L-E. Holiness fills the holes in your life to make you whole. Let me say that again. Do you get me here? Holiness, H, fills the holes, H-O-L-E-S, in your life and makes you H-O-L-E, whole. Did I say it wrong? I got, the Dan, I got the Dan Quayle Spelling Bee Award. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> thank you. I just so many people here to help me. It's just wonderful. I really appreciate it. Wait until you screw up and see what I do to you. <laughs> but the bottom line is this. God wants you holy to fill the holes in your life so you can be whole. And holiness ultimately is the standard and design of God realized. That's holiness. The standard and design of God in relationship realized is holiness. Boy, that's good. I should write that down. It's true. Holiness is the standard of God's design in relationship with him realized. That's holiness. Holiness is perfection. That's a good thing. You see, God understands the beginning from the end, and you think that this shortcut is going to get you there quicker, but it's not. It's a long cut, and it's a long shot. God ultimately wants you to have joy, and joy is the foundation in which you can experience happiness. I'm telling you people, listen, I struggle with this. This is a, this is a God in our culture. We must say no to trying to be happy and say yes to God and his holiness who will fill the holes and make you whole, and then you'll have true happiness based upon the joy of who you are in Christ. First Peter says the following, and I want to read this to you. First Peter 13, verse 20. So prepare your minds for actions. This doesn't sound very much like fun. And exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed 
in the world. So you must not, so you must live as God's obedient children. You see the children thing going on here, which helps us to understand God's the parent, we're the child. We don't understand everything, but God does. He's the perfect parent. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. Oh, goodness, why do you have to put that in there for? I can't hide in the ignorance of me being 18 or 14 or 19 or even 27 or even 41. Now that I'm 65 years old, I have a lot more wisdom. I use this miracle cream, it's fantastic. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You did not know better then. Listen to this, verse 15. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the heavenly Father whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary, get that straight, temporary residence. We are passing through, we're on a road trip between eternities. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from an empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was paid with, not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. Have you noticed that? By the way, tomorrow, I'm not, it's not a prophetic word, but tomorrow, the whole system could collapse. I mean, boom, gone. My grandparents told me about that. The depression, that money meant nothing. You put your trust in that, you're in deep kimchi. Verse 19, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now, in these last days, he has revealed, been revealed for your sake. Now, there's a couple of things I want to help you understand. When you read that, the enemy comes and whispers in your ear, you're not good enough for this. You can't be holy. But the beautiful thing is this. Jesus was paid our ransom, which means Jesus paid a debt we could not pay. So it's not a matter of measuring up and trying hard enough for God to receive you. God receives you if you say, God, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. That's a great place to be. So this is not a matter of mustering up the strength and, 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 and maybe God will, if I do better and help other people, forget all that. It's not about being holy. It's about surrendering to Christ and walking with him in his wholeness to become holy. doesn't mean you never get sick or never have trouble in this world. You will have trouble in this world. And what does the Bible say in, in Luke 12, 31? I love it. It says what? Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Is the kingdom of God above your kingdom? A soldier that goes overseas and fights and starts going shopping and trying to help himself or herself out while a battle's going on is AWOL. We should seek God's kingdom first. And what does he promise us? My friends, if you have not memorized Matthew 6, 33, or, or Luke 12, 31, you need to. This is, this is what gets you back on track. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you greed. Need, I'm sorry. We'll give you everything you need. We get confused between needs and greeds. We're, we're, we are trained in our culture to be greedy people because when you're greedy, you buy stuff and companies make money. And so do churches. Sell all your possessions. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll do that after. Okay. Verse 32. So don't be afraid, little flock. For it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. God wants you to be happy, sure. But he wants you to have ultimate joy. 
which gives you the foundation to enjoy happiness. Do you see that? God knows better. We don't know better. Our culture sure doesn't know better. The advertising agencies that sell us all the stuff constantly from your cell phone banners to things on television to road signs to jingles on the radio, my goodness. They, they don't care. They want to make money. They study psychology. They study the, the human uh, mind to get you to buy stuff. They want to make money. They don't care about morality. And as a result, we're not careful. We get suckered into the American dream, which is not a dream. It's a nightmare. In fact, the economic challenges that our country is facing right now is, is from the God of that. Right now, we're producing more than we're... No, I don't get into that right now. I can start with that. But seek kingdom first. It gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Remember, God wants you to be holy so you can fill the holes with his wholeness and you'll have joy and true happiness. Don't waste your life just pursuing happiness in things, in pills, in drinks, in friends. That is all temporary. Focus on God. The Bible says, as I conclude here in a few moments, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The beautiful thing is this. When I delight myself in the Lord, he takes my heart, he softens it, he molds it to his heart. And then I get the true desires of his heart. And I have true, lasting joy that cannot be compromised by circumstances and the world. Max Lucado, who's a tremendous author, great writer, talked about a fish on the beach. He says, you can pull a fish out of the water and put it on the beach, and we flop it around. And you can throw it, put a million dollars on the beach next to him. You could put brand new cars there. You could do all that. And what, is that fish going to be happy with all that stuff? Of course not. Why? Because the fish is not in its real environment. My friends, the reason why we can't truly find complete happiness on earth is this is not our real environment we we're made for. Our environment is to be with God forevermore. And the reason why we groan inwardly for its redemption is because we are made to be with God forever without sin. And if you think you can find the ultimate joy here on earth apart from God, you're going to be highly disappointed. And you will be an emotional roller coaster needing to medicate your way through life. I just want to read a couple more scriptures to you, and we're going to conclude. I keep saying that. I really mean it this time. John 15:10. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Remember, he saves us. When we obey him and trust him, we remain in his love. Just as I obey my father's commandments, and I remain in his love. I've told you these things so that you'll be filled with what? With joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I was just reading an article by Gallup Poll in, in preparation for today's message. And I read that the United States of America, according to Gallup Poll, did surveys from countries around the world, rank number 33 in the world for being the most happy. Do you know the nations that were most happy? This will blow you away. Guatemala? Panama? And they, and they did a study. They're like, why is this? Because the people have what's really important. They have their family, and they have God. The other stuff's been stripped away, and the real core of what makes us happy is there. In America, we get so distracted. We've got to be careful. I'm going to go back to the very beginning, our first verse we brought up today in Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have, while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, which would be government nor in the Son of Man, which is people like our, you and I, in whom there's no help. His spirit departs and returns to the earth. 
in that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made the earth, the sea, and that's all that's within him, who keeps his truth forever. Let's pray. Father, you have designed us to have joy, unspeakable joy. You have given us the desire to experience joy. And Father, we recognize this morning that the enemy has come, whether it's the world or the enemy himself and his minions. Lord, we recognize the fact that these pursuits are not the right pursuit. We reject the God of happiness today in Jesus' name. We reject the God of happiness and we embrace you, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you know and you said that if we remain in you and you in us, we will bear much fruit and we'll have joy and joy overflowing. Jesus, for the joy set before me, you endure the cross. God, I pray right now. I even pray for Anna Ball who might be watching or Al, other people watching right now. They're at home and they're sick, not feeling well. We want to thank you, Jesus, that in Christ we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, that we have joy in Jesus. And Lord, I just pray right now. We want to just, I pray, Holy Spirit, show us. Holy Spirit, show us what you're talking to us today. As you just say in a seat of prayer, I mean, I be some of you today, God has talked to you about the internet and what, you, what you're clicking on. God has spoken to some people this morning about what you're flirting with. God has spoken to some people what you're popping and what you're drinking and who you're hanging out with. And God is saying, let go of that and would you trust me for your happiness? So Father, we reject the God of happiness and we instead embrace the God of holiness who fills our holes and gives us wholeness in a relationship that is growing both here and forevermore. Amen. Let me just uh, conclude with one more thing, and it's this. It's not about being good enough. It's about God was good enough. Christ was good enough. And because he was good enough, we're good enough if we accept what he's done for us. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you know about him, but you've never said, you know what? I am laying down my life. I'm not the boss anymore. I'm not going to tell God what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Whatever it is, you can pray a prayer right now with me if you want to bow your heads. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you're tugging to my heart today. I'm tired of trying to live my own way. I resign from the CEO of my life. I determine. I step down. I hand my keys in. I declare that you are God. You're my master. You're my savior. And from this day forward, with your help, I choose to live for you. I pray you forgive me of all of my sins. And Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, give me the strength to walk the path that you have for me today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you could all stand up if you could, and we're going to include this one song as we do that. I'm going to ask the uh, prayer team to make their way up. If you prayed that prayer today, I encourage you to share it with somebody and get involved. And I'm going to, if you need prayer for anything at all, we've seen God heal people of, of problems and diseases and situations. I'm going to encourage you to come up, get prayer. So let's have this one song, please, as we do that.
Amen. God bless you. Guys, it's all you need. Amen. God bless you. Holy Spirit.